When I was a kid, my mom used to tell me not to eat too much candy because I could get diabetes. Wait, what? I love candy. Same. What are we at risk? What the heck is diabetes? Hey everyone, thanks for watching D News Today. I'm Trace and we are here with special guest Kaylee Uhas from Explorium. Hi. Diabetes affects more than 380 million people worldwide, and that number is set to double by 2030, according to the World Health Organization. Diabetes takes more American lives annually than AIDS and breast cancer combined, and is the leading cause of heart and kidney failure, amputation, stroke, and blindness. People with diabetes need to test their blood sugar all the time and give themselves shots of insulin. It all starts with food. Sorry, Mom, candy doesn't actually cause it, though it is related to sugar, just not that kind. Diabetes is a failure of your body to properly process the food you're ingesting. When you eat, your body breaks down the food into component parts, one of which is glucose, a simple sugar. The glucose enters the blood and circulates until it's absorbed into cells. So shortly after you eat, your blood glucose levels increase, causing your pancreas to then release insulin. The insulin tells your cells, open up, glucose here. Then the glucose hops in and gets burned for energy. When you have diabetes, your body doesn't produce enough insulin, or maybe the cells don't listen to insulin anymore, or maybe both. This means glucose just hangs out in your bloodstream until it's passed through urine. But all this sugar can severely damage your body in the long term. Diabetes comes in two types, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is autoimmune, so it comes built in on some people. Autoimmune means your own immune system is attacking your body. For some reason, the immune system of people with type 1 diabetes attacks pancreas cells called islets. Islets test the blood glucose levels in the body, so without knowing how much glucose is out there, the pancreas doesn't send out enough or any insulin. Type 1 sufferers usually have to give themselves insulin injections and monitor their blood glucose levels with those little finger prick things. While type 1 is caused by our body attacking itself, type 2 is caused by our habits. Type 2 is far more common than type 1, comprising 90 to 95% of all diabetes cases. Type 2 develops due to a high calorie diet paired with a sedentary lifestyle. Over time, the pancreas gets used to all that glucose floating around in there and it stops making enough insulin or just doesn't make any at all. Basically, too much glucose too often can damage the islets or the cells stop responding to insulin's cries to open up. Type 2 sufferers also have to monitor their glucose levels, but only have to take insulin in 40% of cases. The main treatment of type 2 diabetes is adjusting diet and increasing exercise. That sounds familiar. These medical types only have kind of a one-trick pony thing, right? A study in the Journal of Nutrition found dietary patterns with high intakes of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, as well as low-fat dairy and low-sugar products, were associated with lower risks of type 2 diabetes. So eat right and exercise, and you can avoid type 2. Although, again, it's not about sugar intake, but keeping caloric intake at a healthy level and avoiding being sedentary. Diabetes is sometimes called a metabolic disorder because the human body can't metabolize sugar in the blood properly. Both types are treatable and type 2 can be cured if caught early. Researchers are trying to find cures and causes of all diabetes. Stress, sedentary lifestyle and obesity, as well as genetic factors are all listed for type 2, but a new longitudinal study in cell, host, and microbe might have an answer for the mysterious type 1. Each person has a unique microbiome, millions of bacteria living on and inside our bodies all the time. Most are beneficial and everyone's is different, but those who developed type 1 diabetes had a 25% drop in gut bacteria in the year before they developed the disease. So maybe as microbiome research expands, we'll get a cure for type 1 as well. If left unchecked, hyperglycemia, or excessive glucose in the bloodstream, can cause serious trouble. Glaucoma and cataracts can cause blindness. Neuropathy of limbs can cause them to stop functioning and swell with fluid, forming ulcers and gangrene, which can necessitate amputations. Hypertension, heart disease, kidney disease, hearing loss, skin infections, nerve damage, impotence, infection, and even stroke are all side effects of poorly managed glucose levels. Food is essentially everything we're made of, so when we can't metabolize it properly, it can affect so many different aspects of our lives. Your doctor will know if you are at risk or are pre-diabetic, and it's never too late to manage the disease. Do you or someone you know have diabetes? What's your experience like? Why don't you tell us about it down in the comments and subscribe for more D News. And if you're worried about things like high fructose corn syrup in your diet, you should check out this video for sure. Where glucose can be converted right into energy, fructose has to trek all the way into the liver. By the time it gets there, your body's probably gonna metabolize it into fat instead of turning it into rapid energy. 
Kaylee, thanks a lot for coming and doing this D News episode with me today. Thanks for having me. Where can people find you if they want to see you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at Kaylee underscore Uhas and my own channel, Explorium. Diabetes. Diabetes. Right at the end. There we said it. Diabetes. Diabetes. Diabetes.